All right, so I just picked up the new Sony 7200G Master f2.8 version 2, as you can see here. So since this is a pretty new notable lens from Sony, I figured we would do a quick unboxing of this, and I'll do a quick comparison of it compared to the original 7200G Master, which I have right beside me here. So I'll include some individual shots of the box itself that you can see just in case you want to get a specific look at that. But to begin here, this is essentially what we're working with. Now I'm going to open this. So when you first open this, you are greeted with the large soft case that comes with the 70 to 200 and really all of Sony's G Master lenses. And this is what the soft bag and the case itself looks like. Not too different from many of other Sony's cases for G Master lenses. Now, apart from this, there's a stack of manuals in here, which I'm not sure there's really much else to talk about there. We should not need these since this is a lens. All right, so I'm gonna move this box out of the way here. All right, and so now let us open this a bit more. Which of course you are greeted to the lens encased in bubble wrap. So this is the strap that comes with the case itself. And then if we remove the bubble wrap, you will see we have the new 70 to 200 G Master version two. Let's continue removing some of this plastic here. I'm gonna organize some of this stuff here just so I can get some of this bubble wrap and everything out of the way. And so here we have the new 70 to 200 G Master version two. I can already tell you just feeling this in the hands, this thing feels a lot lighter compared to the version one. And I think as someone that shoots a lot of video with this and does a lot of handheld work now, this is going to be a really huge benefit compared to the version one. I believe the one weighs around 3.3 pounds and this comes in at around 2.3 pounds. And so this is actually pretty close in weight to the 24 to 70 G Master, which I do handheld shooting with all the time. So I think I'll be able to do some prolonged handheld shooting with video with this, whereas I really couldn't do much of that with the version one. Now, if I go to put the lens hood on here. We will see this is a different design compared to the version one. So you can tell the version one here definitely has a different design compared to the version two. The version two, I think, mirrors the lens hood that you'll see on some of other Sony's lenses like the 135 f1.8, sort of the more just traditional round design. I'm just going to remove the lens hoods now. And yeah, without a doubt, just picking these two up, there is a distinct weight difference here between the two. So this is the version one. This is the version two, much, much different in terms of weight. Feels a lot lighter, which is certainly a good advantage. Now, what you'll also see just looking at these two side by side now is that lengthwise and widthwise, they are nearly identical. I can't say that's too surprising given that they're both internal zoom lenses and Sony did not go with say what Canon did with the RF 70 to 200 F 2.8, which has an external zoom. So not too much space savings there that you could get with the new version, but the weight savings is definitely appreciated. Not sure if this will come across in my side product angle here. If not, I'll do some B-roll anyway, but there are some different switches and some additional options that now are on the version two G Master. Specifically in terms of what's been added, you have a full-time DMF switch and now three different autofocus modes versus two. Now also noteworthy here is the fact that you have an aperture ring. So for video shooting, this is actually very handy to be able to have this. Right now it is in the clickable mode. However, you see here, I can also just choose to turn that off and now it is a smooth turning operation. So you can choose that to be clickable or declickable. Now the other thing you can do is just lock this aperture ring altogether. So if we were to do that, now you'll notice I cannot move the aperture ring, which is actually very convenient in the sense that I won't accidentally knock this or adjust my aperture if I didn't intend to. And not all of Sony's G Masters that have the aperture ring have the ability to lock it, so that's definitely appreciated. Other than that, you have the standard zoom ring, not too much to talk about here, the same increments in terms of focal length that you have in the version 1 70 to 200. And given some of the additional switches and the aperture ring on here, you'll notice that the focus throw is definitely a bit smaller compared to what you have, say, with the version 1, but I don't think that's a big deal in this case. You also still have three programmable buttons for the lens, so not too much of a change there. 
and what looks to be a pretty similar tripod collar design, which it looks like if I test this here, can be partly removed, much as the current one can, or rotated around if you wanted to move it out of the way. All right, so before we wrap up here, let's try a couple of different shots. So I have the a7 IV here, which we will use to test this out. Now, a couple of other things also worth noting with this is the fact that you have the same front filter thread size of 77 millimeters, and the minimum focusing distance is improved with this. I think it's something around a little over three feet with the original version one, and this is, I think, a little over a foot at the 70 millimeter range, and somewhere in the two to two and a half foot range at around the 200 millimeter focal length, so an improvement there as well. All right, so some first time shots with the 70 to 200. So not too much to look at here. We're just looking across the room in my little studio space. We are at 70 millimeters now in the new 70 to 200 G Master version two. Active stabilization on in the a7 IV. All right, now we are at 200 millimeters currently again on the a7 IV, active stabilization still on. And now just to make use of the crop mode in the a7 IV, we are technically at 300 millimeters right now with the version two. So 200 millimeters on the lens plus APS-C crop mode, which gives us 300. And again, this is completely handheld active stabilization and not even great handheld posture right now, so this is pretty impressive. All right, and so that is a brief unboxing of the new 70-200G Master version 2 and a little comparison with its older brother, the version 1. Now, I will be doing separate reviews of the version 1 in the near future and the version 2 once I get a better feel for it, so definitely subscribe if you like lens reviews and more coverage around these lenses. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.